So we have to start with the war and the effects of the war. And when you and I talk, we always say, look, we, have to, we don't want to forget the people involved and the human tragedy being played out every single day. But with that, I mean, there are economic effects. So give us a sense of the Israeli economy overall. I know you had a bad fourth quarter, but last year overall was not so bad. No, the, the last year was uh, actually growth of 2%. We beat the OECD average, which was 1.7 for the year. Uh, the year before, of course, in 22 was 6.5, so like a tiger kind of economy. Um, they're projecting that next year will be 2%, which is, for Israel, sort of sludgy, but, but I think uh, the projection for 25 is already at 4.5%. So the, the economy is clearly already in the middle of a rebound. The bad numbers that were for the fourth quarter were largely because the major impact of the war was in October and November, when the full brunt of the call-up of all the, wor uh, the workers who had to go to reserves, 300,000 of them. But they're now coming back. The economy is coming back. The three sectors that have been hit the worst are tourism, agriculture, and uh, construction. And all of these are, are, are starting to see mitigation. So in the tourism area, people like United are starting to fly. The uh, channels are opening up in construction and agriculture. Uh, foreign workers are coming back from new sources. There's discussions about how to bring Palestinians back from the West Bank in. So all of this is coming back. And of course, everyone's watching the tech sector to see what's going to happen there. Exactly. And that's why we talk to you uh, with relish. So that's the economic situation overall. What about the business climate in doing business, particularly with some of the startups that you invest in? Well, what's amazing is that throughout the entire war, investors have behaved incredibly maturely and seriously. They didn't stop investing. And in fact, some of the investors kept on even flying into Israel during war. They're, they're unfortunately used to it, right? This is not our first war. We've fought them over and over again. And everyone knows the way that the economy in Israel performs, which is immediately at war, down. And then I, I think it was even on, on, on your show, I predicted that it would come right back up and the shekel went down, right back up. The Israeli stock exchange down, right back up. And it's uh, in the tech area, it's, it's also happening. I mean, we're entertaining delegations from Thailand and Korea and all over Europe. Uh, people are still visiting, they're still making investments. The big companies in the tech sector, the private ones, the unicorns of which Israel has about 100, which is about 10% of the global total, which is fine for a, company, a country of 10 million people, uh, they're doing okay. The problem is the small companies, mm -hmm. the guys who don't yet have tens of millions of dollars of revenue. They haven't figured out their, their product market fit. So we set up a resilience fund, which actually is a little strange for uh, the venture capital because we weren't taking any uh, fees or carried interest because we wanted to simply save this whole group of small companies were really running into a, a, a terrible weather pattern for fundraising. And we managed, I think, in record time to both get that fund raised, and we've made 26 commitments in less than three months. That's really impressive to hear that that capital is being deployed uh, at that scale. But I am curious about the talent pool. Like you said, of course, some of these foreign workers are starting to come back. Uh, but also, like you mentioned, a lot of workers have been called up for military service. And when it comes to these smaller companies, even if they get the, the funding that they badly need, what, do, do, what does the actual workforce look like? So about 15 to 20 percent of the high-tech workforce was in service. That's now dropped to about 5%. Most of them are back in their positions, but even when it was up at those relatively high numbers, like one in seven of a staff, we're really good at uh, multitasking, even the men, okay? Uh, and uh, we, uh, everyone was covering and working late, and there was this slogan in the country, which was Israel tech delivers no matter what. And we just made sure that the companies met their commitments, didn't screw up their, their customers, and it really, it works. That's how is, Israel operates. Now, in the other industries, like in construction or in agriculture, not so much, right? If the workers aren't there, you're not getting the, but what's wild is that in Israel, there was this massive outpouring of volunteerism, where high school students and college students who are not yet in the, uh, the service were, and families and retirees were all picking fruit 
it was like back to the old days when there were kibbutz volunteers and the whole country was trying to save the agriculture, not so much in, in construction. What about the region more generally? I remember one of the first times we talked to you, you had just gotten back from Riyadh. It was really just before, I believe, the conflict began. And there were great hopes about really doing business for the tech sector across the region. Are those dashed? Are they postponed? Are they going forward? I, I think they're going forward with much less fanfare. Uh, I was in Abu Dhabi and uh, Dubai last week. Um, and uh, we have a a subsidiary developing artificial intelligence, would you believe, in Abu Dhabi, together with uh, support from the Emirate. Um, we're creating some incredible technology around wealth management. And to my understanding, the uh, leadership, both there as well as in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia, is strategically committed to reconciliation. And while things are clearly not going to be big headlines and all kinds of uh, press announcements, there is ongoing discussions, investment, and uh, for us, really nothing has changed. Do you still have access to the same sort of investment funds coming in for your startups? Yes. In fact, there's been you know, some reports about increased dollars coming in, and I, I won't comment on that. And, and people are not reluctant to go into an uncertain area. Look, I think that, remember, when, when there's a crisis, I don't know who has said it, it's a terrible thing to waste, hmm. okay? Because it's tough if you're holding a portfolio of companies, valuations come down, they need more money. It's a problem, okay? It doesn't make it easy. But if you're a buyer and you've got dry powder, oh my gosh, it's an opportunity. And there's a lot of smart money out there that says, wait a minute, Israel's not going anywhere. Israel's on sale, okay? I'm getting into it. And we're seeing a lot of that kind of uh, investment going on. 